Here we go. This is a really cool problem. William Tell, okay, I have to draw an apple. And it's sitting on top of a guy's head. Okay, and he shoots this arrow, and it goes in, it goes through, comes out, right? Right? Yes. This is, that's a mirror, okay? All right? All right? All right? A mirror has a lot of, uh, there's a beard there, a little mustache. Little nose. Excellent. Nice hair. Very furry. You have like that, that one eyebrow going on there. Excellent. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay. Very handsome Emirati. Okay. So it says he has a 30 gram arrow. All right. So the mass, can you see up here? Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mass is 30 grams. Okay. The. It says, a 30-gram arrow is shot by William Tell, okay, shot by Mr. Amir, okay, uh, and it's, it uh, goes through an 8-centimeter thick apple, so this is 8 centimeters thick, 8 centimeters, that's a distance, right, is that okay, distance is 8 centimeters, all right, and it says, the apple is sitting on top of his son's head. Uh, do you think they call like the police on this? I mean, you know, is that legal to shoot an arrow on top of? Would that be legal in the Emirates, there, Amir? Yeah. It would be. Excellent. I won't go over your house, man. I'm telling you. Okay. Right. Uh, we have something called DIFUS in New Jersey, uh, Division of Youth and Family Services. I don't believe I got that right. You know, you, somebody, you, you know that? You have those things in Georgia? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine somebody doing this in Georgia? You'd make the 11 o'clock news, yeah? Okay, kind of a weird problem. Okay, so if the arrow enters the apple at 30 meters per second and leaves at 25 meters per second in the same direction, with what force has the apple resisted the arrow? So think about this. <clears throat> The, what's the initial, see, you have to think the arrow. We're just talking about this eight centimeters. That's all we're doing. All right? So what is the initial velocity of the arrow? 30 meters, 30 meters per second. Okay? So the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. And what's the final velocity of the arrow? Now, now this is the hard part about the problem. You ready? It's actually not very difficult, but students have a hard time understanding how to narrow the problem down. And that's going to be the problem with this unit. It's just that eight centimeters. What's going on in just those eight centimeters? Let me ask you a question. Is the arrow accelerating, negative or positive, during those eight seconds, yes or no? Yes, yes. yes it is. Is it going to be a negative acceleration or a positive acceleration? It's going to be a negative acceleration. Colloquially, we say it's going to, it, it going to, okay? Colloquially, we say it's going to decelerate, but it's a negative acceleration. So the initial is going to be 30, and it's actually going to decelerate. We don't care, we don't care what the arrow is doing as it continues on its path. We don't care. We only care about that eight centimeters. Now remember I told you about dimensional analysis? Yes? And analyzing and then making a unit label conversion. Remember that? In physics, we don't go into that, you know, multiply by factors of one. And that's just like chemistry people are stuck on that stuff. I have no idea why. I teach chemistry. I have, it makes no sense to me. But whatever. So what I like to do is I like to make sure everything is converted and I like to analyze the dimensions. And we know that this is going to be on force, right? And all of the unit labels have to be standard. Is centimeter standard? No. How do you convert 8 centimeters to meters? What's that going to equal? 0 0.08. 0 0.08? 
Okay, 0 0.08, is that okay? You know what I was told? I think this is true. Before the 1960s, people said 0 0.08. Then in schools, it was called the new math. You know, you have to be in your 50s to, uh, no, to know the new math. I was like in third grade when it came in, and that's where that zero came from, the new math. It's one of the leftovers of new math. Yeah, and people still do it. Okay, uh, what about 30 grams? What's that? 30 divided by 1,000 is? Uh, 0 0.03. 0 .03. It's going to be 0 0.03. Is that right? Okay, so what are, we, what are we looking for when we're, we have to find the acceleration, right? Yes? Because we want the force, right? And, and what's the equation for force? Force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? Yes? Right? So what's the mass? Okay, and what is the acceleration? Negative five. No, no, no. How how do I find that? How do I find that? Remember, it did it over a distance. It did it over a distance. What two things are you comparing? What two things are you comparing? Aren't you comparing... Well, what three things are you comparing? Acceleration. Take out your equation sheets. Does everybody have them? The old equation sheets, remember? And there are three linear equations that we use for everything. Remember? Yes, we, we're, we're comparing acceleration, distance, and velocity. Ad, adverb. What, what equation relates those three things? You're looking for acceleration. Uh, Pf squared. What is it? Pf squared equals v naught squared plus... Two All right, three. he's got it. Okay, I'm going to erase. Amir, is it okay if I erase your lovely, wonderful... Representation, I can't do that? Okay, well then I'll write over here. Amir's being very, very touchy. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, he was kidding. Okay, sorry. Okay. No, please don't erase me. Help, I'm disappearing now. Okay, so, now, so I'm, I'm looking for, I'm going to use this equation. V squared, V final squared, right? V naught squared. Right? Plus 2AD, right? Isn't that correct? Isn't that correct? And I'm doing velocity, acceleration, and distance. Correct? Yes? Yes? Yeah, you can't just say 5, because we're looking at just that distance. Yes? You get it? All right? So, uh... You gotta solve for A. So how do you solve for A? VF squared what? Rearrange, rearrange this equation for A. Can you do it? Show the world, this is going worldwide, show the world that I'm teaching wonderful students, okay? Kennedy, no idea? Kenny's from Georgia. She's very laid back. <laughs> Georgia. Southerners. You know the song Georgia? Georgia. Or it's, it's a rainy night in Georgia. Great song. Brooke Benton. Is that right? Brooke Benton. Look that up. Look that up. Look that up. Go on. Get the song out and we'll play it. Oh, no, I can't because then they'll... No, no. Play, get it out anyway. We'll play it. We'll play it. <laughs> Wait, what's the name of the song? Uh, rainy Night in Georgia. We'll sing along with Rainy Night in Georgia. It's a rainy night in Georgia. Sorry, I can't sing. I was arrested for, um, you know, Broke beating cats. 
somebody was walking past my house and they called the police and I was arrested for beating cats because they thought my singing was actually, I was doing beating cats. So <laughs> I had to explain to the officer, I said, no, I'm simply singing. And he said, oh, all right. Yes, do we have it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got it. All right, wait a second, hold on. Well, let's, let's finish this problem first. So, so solve for A, what is A? Go ahead. VF squared minus what? V minus V naught. Squared. Correct. Squared. Over. Over. 2D, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So this is going to be, now we know everything is cool, right? We have kilograms, meters, and seconds. Yes? Yes? All right, then we can just plug in. Cool? Okay. So we have VF 25. 25 squared minus 30 squared over what? 2 times 0 0.08. 2 times 0 0.08 equals what? This is 625 minus 900. 900. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Did I do that right? Over. Are, we, are you slightly impressed that I knew that? Yeah. Are you a little bit impressed? Okay, so 625, so, so, so 25 squared minus 30 squared divided by that is going to be a serious acceleration. What is it? 1,720. What is it? Negative 1,720. Cool. Yes? You get that? Now what? Now what? What is it? I want to find the force. We'll go up here. We have a little workspace up here. We're going to find the force. Okay? I know that force equals MA. So M is going to be what? What's M? 0.03. Times what? Negative. Is that negative? Yes. Okay. So the force equals what? Negative fifty-one point six. Negative fifty-one point six. What? We got to put a unit label on. Uh, Newtons. We're what is it? Newtons. Newtons. Aren't we? We're confident that it's Newtons because we've used in good faith all the equations correctly. I know there are probably physics students and teachers all around the world saying, no, you can't do it that way. No. <laughs> no, yes, you can. Okay? Yes, you can. Okay? You, are we ready? Are we done? So it's going to be Newtons. I do get comments once in a while from the YouTube videos. Usually they're like criticisms. I got this one criticism where, you know how I like to use 10 meters per second squared for G, right? Why do I do that? Well, the author of the, one of the books I use does it, but I, I, did it, I do it anyway. Why do I do it? Why would he do it? Why would anyone do it? To yes? Make, to make calculations easier. To make calculations easier. So this is all about you, is that right? No. Um, yes, that's true, but what else? What's the main reason? So you can look at a problem and do uh, estimation. It's easier to estimate, isn't it, when you're using 10, right? No, it's 9.8 meters per second squared, but I, we use 10. We round it to 10 because we're so used to using base 10 as opposed to base 60. The Babylonians used base 60. Kind of weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Yes, I'm not quite sure how that would work, but that's what they did. That's what they did. All right, so are we finished the problem? It says on the bottom, this is the force that the apple exerts on the arrow. How do you know? Why is it negative? Why is it negative? Why would it be negative? How, how does that figure out? I mean, why would it be negative? Because it's the opposite. Well, <clears throat> well, this is the way physics often works. And you could, we could all agree on this. And that is that the original motion is, is usually given as positive. And then whatever subsequent motion there is, it's negative or some other angle possibly. But if it's straight line motion, back and forth, the original motion is considered to be positive and the resultant 
motion in the opposite direction would be negative. So the apple is going to be exerting that force on the apple. Yeah. So the arrow is applying, what force is the arrow applying on the apple? Positive 51.6. Yeah. Yes. So that's a pretty good size force. What's that like in like kilograms? What's that like in kilograms? It's like five kilos. For the Americans in the group, that's like 10, 12 pounds, two bags of sugar. It's a lot. Americans use sugar as a standard of measure, oftentimes. It's always five pounds. Everybody knows what a bag of sugar is like. Unless you're diabetic like me, so, but I still know. Okay? Are we done? We're off the air, and we will call that... A rainy night in Georgia. <laughs> I'll call that a rainy night in Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye, and we are going to simply enjoy the song, A Rainy Night in Georgia. Who wrote it? Who sang it? Who sang it? Brooke Benton. Brooke Benton. I was right. You want to play it? That was one of my favorite songs as a kid. I loved it. Got kind of a little blues there going on, a little blues going on. You want yeah. to play it, sir? Yeah, yeah, let's play, but let's go off the air. All right, have a good day. <laughs>